Hey, what's up guys? Uh, my name's Max. I'm an ex-ESA, ex-CERN electronics engineer. Uh, and what I'd like to talk to you today about is how to get a job at ESA, or rather how to get a young graduate trainee position at ESA. So this is something that they run every year. Um, they have a handful, probably a hundred um, openings at general, uh, many places around, uh, around Europe. Um, in many different fields, such as electronic engineering, uh, mechanical engineering, all the way through to, um, I don't know, like biology and all sorts of stuff. So uh, across a range of disciplines. Uh, me being an electronics engineer, I applied to an electronics position, uh, which was at one of their bases called Estec. So that's in the Netherlands, um, in Nordwijk, it's a seaside town. Um, and uh, my position was within uh, the power electronics division, so that was the one that I applied for. I read through uh, quite a few positions. I imagine, I think the, the positions have now closed, so those of you who have actually applied are probably watching this video wanting to know what the next steps are. So I'm not really going to focus much on what I did for my CV and my cover letter, um, which really was basically just the, the general stuff that I'd done up until that date. Um, I was actually lucky enough to get a summer internship at CERN, so I had that on my CV and basically a couple of past jobs, my placement placement year, and then just my sort of academic achievements. That was pretty much it. Um, but once you've written your CV, you've got your cover letter done, and you've uploaded that, it took quite a few weeks for me to hear anything back. I think probably four or five weeks until I heard back from them, which was via email, and they said to me, uh, look, you've made it through to the next round, which is what's called a Sonru interview. So if you're not familiar with us, well, what a Sonru interview is, um, it's basically a video interview, so this was pre-COVID and video interviewing was pretty weird. Um, to make it even more weird, it's uh, video interviewing without another person there. So at least for my case, some people had Skype interviews, some people had telephone interviews. I had a Sonru interview, um, basically meant that I had five or six questions uh, that would pop up on the screen. I would have probably 30 seconds to read the question uh, and then the camera would immediately start rolling and I had to just answer the question within the two minutes time slot and if I didn't finish it in two minutes then the, the video just cut off so it's quite a weird uh, way of interviewing something that I don't think many people have had experience with certainly not me anyway uh, so as soon as I heard that I had the Sonru interview I knew that I had one week to prepare before the link uh, came live for I don't know 12 24 hours something like this and I had to sit and do my interview. So what I did was is I read everything I could on the Sonru interviews. I think you can go online and uh, um, take a look at the Sonru webpage to have a look at their material that they've got because a lot of that tells you what, what you need to do, stuff like that, some, some tips. Uh, one of the tips which I thought was great was when you've got the camera set up for your interview, make sure your hands are either fully in shot or completely out of shot because if they keep coming in and out of shot it becomes incredibly distracting. You don't want anything in the background so this would be a terrible setup right now if I was going to be doing a song room because I've got some piece of electronics here, I've got crap everywhere, um, I'm sure my hands are floating in and out of the, of the shot, so you really don't want to be in this type of setup. You want a nice uh, white background, so what I did was I went to my university, I found a quiet meeting room, um, I just basically locked the door, sat in there, had my laptop with, with your charger, don't forget your charger because if it dies halfway through, that's it, like you've probably lost your interview, so make sure your laptop's plugged in. I had a whiteboard on the back, which I wrote in big letters my name, so I said Max Simmons, um, I wrote what position I was going for, and I also wrote uh, England, United Kingdom, just, I don't know why, but I did. Um, I had a suit on, so make sure you prepare for this exactly the same as you would for any interview. So I had a suit, tie, everything sat there, as if I was going to a real, real life interview. Um, I clicked on the link, went through, you get two practice questions which you can do as many times as you like and I really advise doing that but really you want to be preparing for that even before that stage so just get the webcam up, sit there, record the video of yourself, answer some random question, it doesn't have to be difficult, maybe sort of explain the processes of making a cup of tea or something stupid like this just to get used to speaking in front of a camera because that's really what they want, they want to be able to see you portray information sort of effectively and, and calmly during the interview. Um, that's the best way to, to, to tick off marks there. Um, so once you've done those couple of practice questions, you'll get five or six real questions. Like I said, 30 seconds to read the question, two minutes to answer it or something like this, unless they've, unless they've changed it. Uh, for me, the final question was, do I have any comments or questions for them? 
so make sure you think of that before you go into the interview I just thank them for you know giving me the opportunity to do this maybe spoke a little bit about why I wanted to join ESA I think that might have actually been one of the questions excuse me anyway one of the questions was why do I want to join join ESA um, but yeah so really what you want to be able to do is make sure that you can speak calmly um, and you know you're not flapping your hands around and stuff like that so then after that I think it probably took another four or five weeks they were pretty slow and I imagine it's probably going to be a lot slower now with COVID going on um, for me to hear anything back from that in fact I think what happened was it was, it was about four or five weeks and I couldn't wait any longer I found the number of the HR representative who messaged me about my Sonru interview and I just called her up and I said I'm really sorry but can you let me know what the situation is because it's been about four or five weeks and all I've been doing for this four or five weeks is hitting F5 refreshing my emails constantly waiting um, so I would would say yeah it, it takes quite a while to get it through but the next stage is um, a face-to-face -face interview and uh, so what I did was I actually flew out to um, Amsterdam uh, well actually I didn't fly out I took a bus I do not recommend the bus it takes about 11 hours from London to Amsterdam do not recommend it but as a poor student that was uh, although ESA does pay expenses uh, you still have to fork the money up you know fork up the money up front so I paid £25 and got a bus to, to Amsterdam and then a train to, to Nordvike and I stayed in a hotel there um, awaiting my interview the next day so I booked myself a taxi make sure you book yourself a taxi nice in advance uh, they can come pick you up They're, the European Space Agency gives you a taxi number uh, which is super helpful um, call those guys they know the deal they'll come pick you up they'll drop you off they're really nice um, you know, they calm you down beforehand, they drop you off at the front gate, you'll get out, go to security, speak with security guards, tell them, you know, I'm here for an interview, they'll sign you in, check your name, you'll show them your passport, um, they'll give you, uh, I think it's just a temp badge, you know, um, sort of a paper pass, uh, you'll go then go to security, uh, they'll check any belongings that you have, and I'll, I'll mention what you should bring with you to the interview in a minute, um, they'll check anything that you've got, uh, someone I think then takes you, you go through some turnstiles at the front, at least in, in the Netherlands and Estac, go through some turnstiles and off you go and I think you go to the first thing, it's probably your HR interview. So you'll have maybe 30 minutes or so with the HR person there. Um, most of them, are, well, all of them are absolutely lovely so I wouldn't worry about that. You'll, you'll have a chat with them, I'll ask you a few questions. I think they sort out your expenses at that point as well. So if you've, you know, you, your train tickets, your plane tickets, whatever. Um, hotel costs, food, all that sort of stuff. Um, you give them the receipts and they'll make sure that they get the money sent over to you. Uh, and then shortly after that, you'll have your technical interview. So what I did was, as I made sure I brought with me um, everything that I thought was gonna be important for my interview. So that would be um, going for an electronics position that was in the power electronics sector was uh, anything I could that I had that showed power electronics. So, um, I brought with me circuit boards, I brought with me logbooks, I brought with me uh, even something as trivial as this. So this was just something I 3D printed and made, which was a solar filter. So this screws onto the front of my camera and blocks out sunlight and I could take pictures of the sun. So I took this with me and um, I, I also took the picture of the sun that I took. I printed that out and took that with me. And so what they did was they pretty much asked me to introduce myself and that's what I did you know you give them a little bit about your background what schools you went to what universities went you went to etc etc um, and then they start asking you some technical questions I had about five people in my interview which was quite a lot um, but I you know they depending on what YGT you're going for obviously your question is going to be specific to that but one thing that they did um, sort of ask me which I reckon will be probably similar throughout most people's is um, can I name any of the satellites or launchers that they've got behind me? And so behind me, they had all of these um, sort of uh, models of, uh, you know, the Ariana 5, Ariana 6 uh, rockets, um, a whole bunch of satellites. So I would probably try and, I mean, I when I went to the interview, I didn't know pretty much any of them. I, know, I knew that their launcher family was there. I knew that it was Ariane something. And I could probably pick out one of their satellites, and that was about it. And they didn't seem to mind too much at least i i knew some of their stuff but if you want to really impress them definitely brush up on that sort of stuff um, that would be a great way to prepare and then probably not much longer after that 
they did actually tell me that I was successful and that was the the final thing the the final stage in the process so it's pretty quick I went there uh, to interview with a face-to-face -face with another guy um, and I thought they used to take two people for the same YGT position which is not actually true they only take one person per YGT position and so I was under the impression that the other guy that I was interviewing with was probably going to be the guy that you know I get the job with completely didn't think that he was going to be the guy who uh, was you know sort of after my position as well but what happened was that uh, in the end he decided that they would close some other position and that they would take both of us on for the same YGT so that was pretty weird but pretty cool um, pretty cool thing so um, yeah I would say that those guys, those of you who have uh, who have applied with your CV cover letter the next thing you're going to hear about is probably a Sonru interview it's going to be a while for them to trudge through all of the applications that they've got uh, but yeah so uh, fingers crossed and if you've got any questions let me know comment down below um, and if you want a cool snazzy t-shirt that says ESA then um, you can either go work for ESA in which you can buy from one from their shop or you just uh, go online and buy one from their shop because I think anybody can buy them so best of luck and uh, any questions let me know